We know that trauma affects the brain at any age, but when a child endures trauma, the result is profoundly tragic. It sets in motion a pattern of changes in the brain that can be devastating in adult life. Let's take a look at the four ways early life trauma can affect people later in life. One involves problems with emotional awareness. So really being disconnected from their inner emotional life and not knowing what they feel and not really having a language to communicate their feelings. And I think that can often lead to a number of difficulties, first in relationships, in their ability to regulate their emotional states because they don't know what they're feeling. And so it can really lead to a cascade of difficulties. Then they often have problems with emotion dysregulation. So individuals with a history of post-traumatic stress disorder related to early life trauma will often feel like they're on an emotional roller coaster, like they have no control over their emotions and like they're just being controlled by their emotions. And I think that can lead to a number of difficulties. For example, substance abuse, people feel so overwhelmed by their emotions that they often turn to alcohol or street drugs in an attempt to regulate their emotions, or they turn to disordered eating, for example, starving themselves. And people, I think, often tell us, you know, when I don't eat for a while and when I starve myself, at least my emotions get a little less intense. Or they resort to binge purging in an attempt to numb themselves for short periods of time in order to overcome the intense emotional experience. So we see that people with early life trauma can have difficulty handling their emotions. But what does this mean for healing? Emotional awareness, emotion regulation are two huge problems. And then I think the whole social functioning is very difficult for our patients. And I think, again, I think that makes a lot of sense because people grow up not having a secure base, as Bowlby often talked about, so they don't have a caregiver they can rely on. And so that really does not enable them to know what a normal relationship is, what trust is, how to manage anger, you know, how to feel safe with someone else. And so I think our patients have tremendous difficulties interacting socially. It's disheartening to hear about the profound and long-term ways in which early childhood trauma can affect the brain. But if we've learned anything from mind-body medicine and neuroplasticity, it's that it's never too late to heal. That's why we created a training program on the treatment of trauma to gather the leading experts from across the world and enable them to share the newest, most effective methods that are being used today. If you would like to learn breakthrough treatments for trauma that are reducing symptoms, shortening treatment time, and helping patients recover their lives, you are invited to listen to a full-length interview with Dr. Ruth Lanius, one of the leading experts featured in this program. She'll be discussing the neurobiology of trauma, what happens in the brain of someone who has had traumatic experiences. Here are the other topics that will be included in the interview.